absolute loop means it's the time for the show 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 and it's time for the show it is time for the show oh hey uh, hey uh, well welcome back it's sonic weekly and i'm your one of your hosts grant hello and looks like we've got the cast back together because back again with us is Bo. hi Bo. here we go buddy hey you found the rhythm there eventually hey thanks that's uh that's what they say about me Ol finds the rhythm eventually <laughs> stuttering grant give him a podcast and hey here he is out of the shadows into the spotlight star of the show david the lurker hi david oh hi grant hi Bo. right yeah i could see that like you're the guy who you know at the school dance maybe you were sitting at the wall at first but but when that final song hits like you are out you are storming you're taking the gal home even though you, it's ninth grade so you're not you're, you're definitely not taking no, that, my mom's that picking home. me up absolutely yeah. <laughs> But, you know, in your mind, you definitely yeah. took her home. It's one of those things where it's like nobody's dancing, right? Uh-huh. Everybody's everybody's wallflower. And the one person goes out. Oh, it's bad. It's sort of, oh, but then here comes the teacher. Uh, it's oh, it's even worse now. But oh, wait, <laughs> here comes the jock. Wait, what is this? Is this the movie Challengers? No. Topical reference, Sonic Weekly. But then everybody comes out onto the dance floor, having a good time, grooving, getting down. That's the rhythm of the show. Hey, we have a guest this week, and we're very excited about it. Bo, would you do the honors of introducing our special honored guest? Well, we have Ryan Langley, straight from Sonic the Hedge blog, straight from a bunch of cool Twitter bots that post Sega-related stuff, also known as Arlan. Hey, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for coming. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Thanks for inviting me here. I have not been on too many podcasts. You're welcome. And thank you. <laughs> thank you. And we're, we're all start. welcome. Start, we're all start. welcome. Yeah, we're yeah. doing well. Uh, Sonic Weekly. What's going on this week? The Knuckles Show. The Knuckles Show came out. We're going to talk about the Knuckles Show. There were some new Legos, I hear. What's the, what's the news? Right. Are, are, we, are we doing the news briefly? I, get, right. yeah, I think well, a, a brief news and then as a natural segue yeah. into a deeper conversation with that makes, Ryan. That makes and sense. And then we'll talk about Knuckles. Dear listener, we will talk about Knuckles mm-hmm. in a bit. A lot. Uh, right. As, as I do always, I, I steal the news from uh, sonicstadium.org, your number one source of stadiums since the year 2000, I believe. And... Uh, Legos. Everyone loves Legos. Remember when a Sonic Lego thing thing seemed so crazy, and now there's so many sets that you'll you'll never be able to afford them because Legos are always so expensive. Yeah, that's right. We've got Wave Two. I mean, I don't know if they called it Wave Two. They've announced three new sets. There's Knuckles, and he's hanging out with Amy at the Master Emerald Shrine. You've got Sonic. Well, Sonic. Oh yeah, Sonic's there, and he's wearing a little a little vest because it's Tails' adventure boat. Not Tails Adventure Boat. It's his adventure boat. <laughs> is it? I, I believe it's called the Sea Fox 2. Correct. Which means this is a canonically new invention. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. It and does say that on, on the boat. Sea Fox 2. That's, that's kind of neat. That's kind of cute. Does not have a drill on the back of it, though. Oh. Which is really the, the whole thing with the with the Sea Fox. Yeah. It, it feels like he just he just went out and make a boat. Oh. Uh, and he's, he's in that thing. And then the third... And final one, it's this supersonic versus the egg drillster. Whoa. And for some reason, Shadow is there along with a picture of him and Maria <laughs> pre her getting shot in the Lego universe. So it is so bizarre. <laughs> it, it does seem like, oh, we can't just have supersonic fighting Eggman. We got to we got to spice it up. I don't I don't get that that end bit. Yeah, the, the drillster. I mean, I guess it's essentially what the Sonic Two boss, like the very first one. That's essentially what it. What it's essentially it that, but it's uh, the modern version, yeah, I guess. Where it's got like one. it's got a modern Eggman in it or whatever, and it's got a. It comes with a Supersonic, which is kind of neat as well. But like the, it just has this weird little offshoot bit of Shadow <laughs> in a lab somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things with a lot of these new Lego sets, and this is like same with the Mario stuff too, where it's like just a bit of a, a bunch of random little bits of things, and not necessarily like a, a you know like a ship or something like that. It's like always got these little just little islands of 
in bits and pieces put together. And I just, yeah, I don't know if I really like that stuff as much. Yeah, you guys it's... put together Lego sets? I mean, when I was a kid, I used to, uh, I had a lot of Legos. And then as an adult, I've gotten a, a handful of Star Wars sets. Mm. <laughs> right, the last big one, I think it was an X, the X-Wing, an X-Wing. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is cool. I got it as a gift. And then, and then, um, no, I guess the very last Lego thing I got was the first Sonic Lego set, the Lego Creates thing, where it seemed like, oh, this might be it. This might be your only shot at true Sonic Lego, aside from Dimensions. And, and then they went, oh, I guess this made us a lot more money than we thought. Um, I'm just staring at that co- miscolored hand pushing the button on the Super Sonic cover. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like a blue hand. Also, okay. uh, Maria, right? There's a Lego Maria now. I guess it's so. a picture, right? A picture of Lego Maria in the Lego yeah, style. A picture of Lego, right? So maybe with you know Sonic Three coming out at the end of the year, maybe we'll get real Lego Maria, mm-hmm. and then you can. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Have I've... her have a degenerative <laughs> disease. Yeah, <laughs> and get shot by it's, a gun yeah. agent. Yeah, it is one of the things I guess with a lot of these ones. It's like. I think we're so used to getting all the different, like, uh, oh, it's Chemical Plant, oh, it's Green Hill, right? But now it's, like, Amy's Animal Sanctuary or, or like, the, the Sea Fox this, uh, Sea Fox 2, and it's, like, it's not necessarily pulling from something that, like, oh, yeah, that thing that I did or, you know, Spagonia or something like that. Yeah, you just have this design lying around and you put no. tails on it. What? Oh, I love <laughs> a, a Spagonia Lego set. Uh, I'm trying to remember... What the ones from the first round were? I know there was uh, Knuckles in a robot suit. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> yeah. And that because right, the Master Emerald Shrine that's coming out doesn't have the Master Emerald, so you have mm-hmm. to buy Knuckles in a robot suit. Correct. So that you can have, which is just a little silly, right? Yeah. Um. That's how they get you. Yeah. It was. That's how they get you. That's the business model, man. It was Amy's Animal Rescue Island. And then the loop challenge, and you did get we did get the Death Egg robot, and we did get oh, yeah. Tails's workshop with the uh, with the plane and everything, and we've got Shadow on his bike. We we got the plane one for Christmas, and that that was fun for the whole family. <laughs> Ooh. Fun for the whole family sounds like Bo is stealing his children's toys and just like <laughs> in the middle of the night going. <laughs> My older son and I we had, we had a blast. Nice. <laughs> to answer your question earlier, I was not much of a Lego kid. I guess I had a deprived childhood, but it was a different time, a different era. There were Legos around. I don't remember having a Lego set <laughs> ne- uh, necessarily. Mm. Was definitely more into action figures anyway and telling stories that way than I was in necessarily like building a castle. Oh, so you didn't have like? Oh, I wasn't into Lego. I was into connects. Like, were you? A no, kid? I just wasn't into engineering. I, I STEM was after my time as a kid. Uh, uh, <laughs> they didn't invent STEM yet, right? What What is that one thing? I I feel like I had it as a kid, where it's just a, a little, lots of nuts and bolts, and oh, like an erector set, an erector set. Yeah, I had one of those. Yeah, I couldn't. I I tried to build stuff, but it would always come apart. I think my cousin had like a lot of Technic, which was like the the like the adult lego at the of the time and like it was oh, like yeah. it looked like a real cool car and stuff like yeah. that so i was pretty jealous of that if you had an apple 2e you could program it to do stuff <laughs> like what are those fancy ones yeah i don't know you know what i did play with was those did you i don't remember what they were called but they were like sort of stickers and sort of magnets and you would move them around on a background that yes and yeah. also wacky worlds on sega genesis <laughs> bring them both up because i feel like they're lego adjacent they're both about building <laughs> and and free play it it wasn't quite apple 2e but it was like 486 ibm pc but my sister had this greeting card creation program but she didn't use it to create greeting cards she used it to have this like virtual dollhouse because you could like drag and drop like characters around and yeah that was that was fun for that section of the family (laughs) i get it i yeah you know why not you find play where you can uh, but yeah, Knuckles is kind of the big story this week. It, it also was a record setter as far as Paramount Plus shows go, right? Paramount Plus is on the lower side of the streamers, but relative to their other Star Trek based programming, I guess this had more than usual viewers or a duration or, you know, I skimmed the deadline article this morning and I can't remember, but that's what I do recall. It was their number one original series by streaming hours, I heard. and. Actually, if you had told me in 1994 that Knuckles is going to have a live action show and everybody's going to like it, I would have said, yeah, duh, Knuckles is awesome. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah. I mean, I yeah, I guess a lot of people like it. Probably cost a lot less than the uh, Halo series, I imagine. So uh, right, like if you if you had told me a Knuckles show would have better ratings than a Halo show, I would have said uh, not now because Halo was the biggest thing in the world. Yeah, imagine if I came out of a warp ring to you in 2006 yeah. and said, "Look around you. Look at all these Mountain Dew cans. Knuckles one day will wi- will reign supreme over these Halo guys, these master chefs and chiefs." <laughs> Oh, man, I want to see Knuckles on a Mountain Dew can. Yeah. <laughs> Dream big, baby. Someday. This is the year, if if it's going to happen. Yep. It's green, so, you know, it'll, it's it's what he'll be collecting, I guess. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, there's different ones, right? So the regular Mountain Dew is green, but like Code Red, like I guess that would be the Knuckles one. Sonic would probably be on the regular one. Tails, they sometimes have a yellow-ish one. And then Shadow, that could be what? Pitch Dark? Pitch Black? What's it called? Pitch Black. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Sure. He was oh. chowing down on some uh, on some Doritos for like half a second <laughs> in, in new product placement. So Exactly. All right. Um, we should pitch this to Mountain Dew. Yeah. Hey, yes. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do a little segue. Ryan, so you watched the first episode of Knuckles, uh, and maybe you could tell us a little bit about what you thought of that first episode, and then... From there, you'll have a crossroads conversationally, and I encourage you to tell us more about your origins with Sonic the Hedgehog and Knuckles and, and what parts of the franchise you like and what resonates with you the most. I think uh, probably our listeners are definitely familiar with Sonic the Hedge blog and your work, but maybe they don't know so much about Ryan Langley. So take us on a journey, if you will, please. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, I've been uh, around for a very long time at this point uh, in the in the Sonic community. Uh, back in 1998, a very, very, very long time ago, uh, and 99, I was like online from Australia. I'm from Australia originally, if you couldn't tell already. <laughs> uh, somehow, you know, I was... Uh, having to go to the library so I could go on the internet <laughs> on the 56k modem and I would go to Andy Watts's Sonic the Hedgehog webpage, which is still around technically. Technically. <laughs> so I could go on to web rings and find things and all this other stuff. That's, that Sonic is still winking to this day. It is, and it's making a ring sound every single time you load every single <laughs> page. And even then, I mean, the thing there was really being able to go online and like you could go to the Sonic Team webpage and actually like see what the hell was going on oh this burning rangers games coming out or whatever's going on that's so bizarre no one else no no one else was being like super open about game development in 1998 that web page is still up the burning rangers 1998 one yeah the original it's, it's wild but also wild how like tiny the little icons and everything were on oh a, yeah on ja- like japanese websites didn't go hd for until probably like <laughs> 2010 i feel it was still very much <laughs> made for phone like phone resolutions and stuff at the time but when i was able to go finally on the internet First things actually was actually a website called da- Danny's Sonic Fan Created Games that was made by a guy called Danny Russell who uh, works at Sega and I actually and was running the and is running the Sega Forever stuff uh, that is there uh, and I was and I've actually been working with him uh, on that stuff um, like a year ago when we were still updating that sort of thing uh, but his website uh, if, if I recall went down at some point uh, and I was like well that sucks uh i really want to know more about these sonic fan games uh i got a front page 98 download uh and i got a xoom zoom uh web account and i made sonic fan uh sonic fan game hq about a couple months later i randomly was speaking to uh andy wallen in a email that he still has and has sent to me uh, of me going, hey man, wouldn't it be cool if Sonic Fan Game HQ was on Emulation Zone with the Sonic Stuff Research Group as a 14 year old? And he was like, yep, that sounds cool. I'll make you an account and you can have access to this and make uh, Sonic Fan Game HQ on that. And so that was about 25 years ago now that that happened. That's amazing. And I just want to break into this because I don't know if I'll ever have another segue with front page 98 in it. <laughs> <laughs> at, at my school, you know, rural Midwest, not a whole lot going on, but we, we got some sort of grant to get a computer lab. And then there was a guy who he was going to teach us web design. And so we got everybody on the computer lab, but we got front page 98. I think we had to take turns on the computer to use front page 98. Oh, this wow. guy, he taught us how to use it. 
and we made a, a web page for the school and we could go and update it and I, I don't know what was on there but anyway this guy was later convicted of murder oh my god oh, wow the way they got him was the feds they, they went to him and they said hey we're investigating this murder can you help us out and he's like yeah no sure no problem they're like hey all right cool but come come meet us for coffee he's like yep no problem i got this and they ask him like yeah do you know anything about it he's like oh no and, you know i can't help you i can't help you and like oh well th thanks man um we'll pick up the tab for the coffee we'll see you later he leaves they take the coffee cup take the dna sample from the lid and nail him <laughs> oh <laughs> for half a second I thought you were going to be like, yeah. And so they went to the home page and looked at the HTML <laughs> and they found the confession because he didn't realize that you could view the source. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wondering how it was going to connect and then it just didn't. So that was, <laughs> no, its, no, that was no. its own surprise. Wow. So that means you've interacted. Wait, wait, who was this again? Like the, the person per who taught, who taught right. Bo front page 98 murdered someone. Right. So you have interacted with someone who committed murder. He was also technically the superintendent of the schools. Wow. Wow. Some listeners may know my life as a television show, like a really weird one. And uh, <laughs> that was one of the, right. one of the early episodes. Stranger scenes and finales. <laughs> right. So this is a good segue because, Ryan, you are in uh, game development yourself. Have you <laughs> known anybody who may have committed murder or use the term downsizing i believe <laughs> in corporate speak i i do not know any actual murderers uh, oh, thankfully okay. uh, or at least ones that i don't know of <laughs> who knows someone someone might out there might, might have committed murder at some point uh, with sonic fan game hq and doing all that for so long i when i got out of high school i was like cool i want to go into video games um there wasn't that many options in australia and especially in Adelaide, which is where I'm from. So I did my computer science degree, got to the end of that and realized, I don't think I'm actually very good at this programming stuff. <laughs> this is way harder than front page. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I was like, well, I could probably, I'm probably a good designer. So let's try that. So I ended up uh, at first trying to get a job as a designer. Uh, I was able to get a QA tester uh, job at a studio called Chrome. Uh, that was like the one studio in Adelaide that existed. Uh, and I worked on as a QA person, Star Wars, The Force Unleashed for the PSP. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, which they were the developer of and stuff like that. And that was really cool, like way to get people to, way to catch up with people that way and just learn about how game development works. And I still know a lot of those people from that time. At the time, I was also writing like side blogs for uh, Gamma Sutra. Mm. Uh, they were uh, a, a website called Gamer Bytes at the time. I was really into Xbox Live Arcade games and no one was writing about them online at all. Like no one gave uh, two shits about it. So I started writing about those. And then uh, Simon Carlos, who was running Gamma Sutra, was like, hey, what if I paid you some money and you just did that for us? And I'm like, cool, that's great. <laughs> that then got me to actually go to E3 in 2009, which was like amazing. Wow. Because uh, I was like, I don't think I'll ever be able to go to this thing. And I was right. I never went there, I never went there again. <laughs> But that was like the time to go. That was like that was like around the peak. It was well, maybe like, that. Maybe I mean, as far as in our age, like in the nineties, would be a whole different sort of thing. Oh right? yeah, two thousand nine seems like it was just after. It was like a lot of E three is dead just before that, where they downsized, but then they sort of grew back. Oh, that was after uh, yeah. at the time. But then, like even that, I was able to meet up with a bunch of people that I, you know, my boss in now at my studio is where I met him there because they were showing off a game. Not at E3, but at a art gallery around E3. Huh. <laughs> so I was able to like, just catch up with them on that thing. But that job went away. Uh, I then was writing about Xbox Live Arcade games. So uh, I was interviewing a studio called Half Brick uh, in Australia about their game Rascals and interviewed them about their game. And then also was like, oh, they're looking for design. And I'll just slip in my design, <laughs> my design uh, review there and was able to get a job with them. And then about three months later, they uh, released Fruit Ninja. And then it was like, ah, oh, complete pivot to a completely different platform. It's not about Xbox Live Arcade games anymore. It's about iPhone games. But there I, was a, I became a designer and I worked in a game called Age of Zombies, which was a top-down uh, shooter originally for the PSP. And that was then a mobile, and then ordered a mobile later. That then was the first game that involved Barry Steak Fries, who's the guy in Jetpack Joyride. Uh, from that, 
worked on a bunch of games. Uh, I worked on Fruit Ninja and Jetpack Joyride for a while there as well. I worked there for about six years, and then I moved to New Zealand where I joined Pickbox Studios, uh, and I've been working on I've worked on games like Doomsday Clicker, Dungeon Inc. Most recently, a game called Ready Set Golf, which is an online multiplayer golf game for iPhone, uh, and that was a game I pitched and designed and awesome. did the UI for and and sort of everything. I like making like these like really small sort of projects. And currently I'm on a game called Cluster Duck, which is a game we've had for a few years now. Uh, it's a game where you breed weird ducks. I'm in. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Ducks get really weird. They get cursed. They, get ex- they go all sorts of weird ways. Um, but people love it. Apple loves it. It's been like game of the day like 15 times or something like that. So we just try, keep trying to find new ways to go, why, okay, why, do, why does Apple like this game so much? But let's keep doing stuff to it. Because they seem to like it. Kind of. Was there any any inspiration from the Chow Garden for that? <laughs> uh, no, no. This it was actually just a it was a weird little game jam game that the the team made at the time, and it was just like we just want to make a weird game where you breed ducks. And they're <laughs> like, maybe there's something here. So they had like a month <laughs> to make it, and have just been like slowly building upon it from then. But outside of all the game dev stuff, I got back into Sonic stuff, and so I started uh, Sonic the Hedge blog. Uh, which was a Twitter and Tumblr account. Twitter is about to have a, almost 100,000 followers now. Wow. Uh, which is pretty rare. Yeah. And that sort of got from all the, I, I used to love all the stuff of like, you know, hidden stuff on Sonic games and all that sort of stuff on that time. And I was actually inspired by the Mario uh, website, Super Mario Broth. Love Super Mario Broth. Yes. Love, those, love that guy. Love those guys. Uh, like one guy who just gets really deep into a lot of weird stuff in Mario games. And it's like, I, I can do, I have too much knowledge in my brain that I could just do kind of that, <laughs> but for Sonic. And so rather than having a Sonic retro style website, it was like, what if we just piecemeal this every day with just some cool, interesting facts about Sonic stuff? And then that then expanded from just hidden things to, you know, posting artwork or posting GIFs of scenery of games and all that sort of stuff. More about the overall vi- Sonic vibes and trying to be a positive influence on Sonic stuff generally. And so, um, yeah, I keep posting that and then that expanded into other stuff too. And so, so were you out for a while? You said you, you came back to it and started Hedgeblog. Were, were you? Yeah, I, I sort of, after I did Fangame HQ, I actually started another little site called Secrets of Sonic Team, which was kind of uh, a, a hidden Sonic stuff website that I probably did for about a year. But was kind of, I was out of the Sonic website stuff. I was still playing the games. I was still reading the Archie comics. And all that, but wasn't but wasn't like uh, being proactive in the community as much. Uh, and not until like about 2016, where I, I got back into the Sonic Amateur Games Expo, and I was like, "Oh man, all this stuff is actually pretty cool. Uh, it's way different from all the click and play stuff that I used to, <laughs> to play, the uh, all that sort of stuff." So I got into that a little bit, started like doing some YouTube videos on that stuff, and then. Um, yeah, it was just uh, just got back into it basically. Yeah, well, like yeah. Y- you didn't have the period of Sonic Heroes and like eh, maybe I'm gonna walk away from this for a while and then a little bit, I guess. I never play. I never really played Sonic 06. Mm-hmm. Like that was just a game. It's like I'm just not actually gonna. Now I do own. I do own copies of it now. <laughs> copies. Copies plural. Yeah. Yeah. I've ba- copies I've barely plural. Played it. And I was actually really excited about Sonic Unleashed when in the run up to Sonic Unleashed because I thought it looked really cool the trailers were also visually beautiful but then I actually did play the game and I actually ended up returning the game wow <laughs> so I just I didn't at the time I just didn't like how it played yeah. I was really excited because I liked I really liked Sonic Rush I was playing Sonic Rush on my DS I was like oh it'll be one of those for this but I found Sonic Unleashed brutally hard in ways that not even just necess- not the Werehog stuff, but just the actual game itself, I found too fast. Yeah, and it was like I can't actually control things. I feel stupid that I can't actually control anything here. Yeah, and so I put that down, and then I then got back to it a bit with Colors because Colors was a slowed down version that was a bit more like it was way more easy on the <laughs> easy on how to actually do stuff. It was more about instead of like press X B. L R L two L whatever 
in in, right. in an order. It was press A five times because that's fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and each time it'll cheer you on even further. Yes, like, exactly. <laughs> like it was about having making it fun, easy to have fun, mm-hmm. easy to look cool. Yeah, and I think that's a core element of like some a lot of the Sonic stuff is making it easy to do cool shit all the time. Have you now played every Sonic game, including 06? Are there any, like... Um, it's hard you to can't do all every of them. Sonic game. Yeah. Yes, you can't do every... But, you know, every mainline Sonic game, every like, uh, excluding, like, Waku Waku Patrol Car. Wacko. <laughs> it's not... Wa- is it Wacko Wacko? <laughs> Waku Waku Sonic Waku, Waku, Waku. Patrol Car or whatever. I've played bits of everything, really. And a lot of it... But a lot of that nowadays, particularly for hedge blog or stuff like that it's actually less to play the games and more just to get some footage to then make the content for it uh or something like that i did when i was doing sega forever stuff there was some times it's like we would like maybe you know this was back probably for the 30th anniversary it was like we would like to get footage of every sonic game so it's like cool fine i'll play through a couple of hours of sonic 06 i'll play through a little bit more of unleashed i was playing those on like an actual 360 uh, to get capture footage and stuff like that. But ultimately, none of that actually ended up getting used. <laughs> so I, I play all those. But like, I've never finished Unleashed. I've never finished uh, t- uh, 2006. And what about like, you mentioned the Archie comics, um, but you know, you're a game developer and we've been focused on the games. What about the cart? Were you ever into like Sat AM as a result of Archie? Um, and then how do you feel about the movies and the Knuckles show? I think the reason why I got so into Sonic and probably the rest of us as well was because in 1993, if I wanted anything, there was a Sonic thing that had that as part. <laughs> there was two different cartoons, you know, in, even in Australia, there was two car. The two cartoons were on uh, that we never got season two of Satam. Oh, right. what? Uh, That's we only ever got the first season of it. Oh, wow! But Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog was on in the mornings. Uh, and I enjoyed that. I had like the VHS tapes and stuff. Uh, Sonic Underground was on. I watched it, and I every time I try to go look at it, watch it now, it's like this is just the worst. <laughs> I can't stand it. I've never taught. I never post about Sonic Underground on on Hedge Blog at all because it's just, it's just never to go back. But it's I, such I an post ap- about the intro, and but like I used, I tried making clips of the different cartoons, <laughs> but it's so painful I, to get back to. When I have they try a- to have music and. Make songs. It's like this is the cringe stuff I've ever. Right. You know what I have right next to me? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> this is a VHS tape that I recorded in 1999. I would wake up at 6:30 in the morning. Yeah. Just to record Sonic <laughs> Underground, and I would always wonder why I was doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Which episode is it? Oh, it's well, it's many fit on here, so like six hours worth. <laughs> oh boy. Um, but I, I had a, a yeah. I mean, I watched all those. Uh, you know, the OVA I had on DVD when that came out. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, I read the comics, all all the Archies, I was getting those uh, as they were coming out and I still get the IDW stuff now oh. as well. Did you ever fall off the Archie series at all or were you consistent for, for that run? I think I fell off for a couple months and then Sonic Adventure was announced and then I was like, oh, I'm back on, baby. Let's wow. <laughs> <laughs> this, this stuff wow. looks cool. I'm going to... Uh, get engaged back on the Sonic stuff. It was nice. I think it was like around probably like 70 or something like that, where it was like really fell off the wagon. Robotnik's dead. Right. Can't, nothing's actually uh. happening really. And it's just getting into <laughs> Ken Pender's style shenanigans. It was a bit of a no man's land. Exactly. Oh, so does that mean you have not ordered uh, the Lara Sue Chronicles Beginnings, which is, of course, I a- have not. Oh, but I'm not. <laughs> It's just Moby's. Tw- I'm sure he would if you asked him nicely. I'm I'm sure he would. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's Sonic- for the collection. <laughs> Sounds like you have a good collection of uh, yeah. W Archie. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any Fleetway? Yeah. Was- I actually do have almost all the Fleetways, and actually, because okay. I didn't come out in Australia. But uh, going back to the start, uh, in my early days, uh, talking with Danny Russell, uh, he had all the a lot of the Sonic the Comic comics. And I traded him Ooh. for a bunch of games at the time. And so I, you know, probably cost him hundred pound <laughs> to send them all uh, to Australia yeah. and me sending all the, all these games over to him. Uh, and then ultimately I think he regretted that he sold, <laughs> sold them all to me. <laughs> uh, but um, I did actually start scanning them a bit uh, as well because I getting them in really high resolution, but I don't, they're all in back in New Zealand and I'm living over in the U S now. 
So eventually, <laughs> oh. when I bring all my stuff over from New Zealand, okay. then I'll be able to start. Uh, and hopefully they don't deteriorate and hopefully they're still okay because I haven't been back there for a few years. Right. But that's when I'll get into that. That, that would be very helpful because i know the scans that do exist they're they're not the best they have that watermark on the front and they're also missing things like they don't have the ads they don't have any of the posters they don't have like there's stuff missing we don't have actual an actual complete sonic the comic scan collection online exactly i do i do listen to the sonic the comic the podcast as well which is a i'm a big fan of Mm -hmm. it was just so interesting to go back to those those things because it's a completely different idea of what sonic was yeah yeah i always get confused looking at it because i'm like i don't i wasn't a kid when this existed but i I was (laughs) yeah yes it's a wild world yeah so Okay, yeah, Knuckles. So, you know, right, Knuckles Knuckles is the is is the man right now, right? He had a great uh a great time in Sonic 2, the movie. He hey, you can play as him in, in Frontiers, and now he's got his own television show in his 30th year. It only took him 30 years to be the star. Uh so yeah, Ryan, you you you've watched a small bit of it. Um how how do you feel about it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Are you gonna finish the show? Or are you now, because of the show, regretting that you've spent, you know, 30 years paying attention to Sonic <laughs> I mean, I will probably begrudgingly watch it uh, <laughs> at this point. Okay. The, the, the Sonic, the Sonic movies and, and stuff like that. Like it was such a, you know, it's, it's great that Sonic was finally able to get a film. Um, but it's definitely not the kind of film that I was hoping for uh, or the, the series, I guess. I, I'm the, I'm the person who was like, I just wanted this to be fully animated really. And just be in its own world and not the whole Sonic goes to another planet thing that they they always sort of try to go to. But I mean, as as a TV show for the for the Knuckles series and based off of what happened in Sonic 2, the film, uh, I mean, it was pretty good that first episode. Um as a side story, it looks pretty good. I think animation wise, Knuckles looks pretty cool. Like definitely. They do a really good job of that. The fact that they did get Elba back for it is great. The in the movie there was like a little side thing that they did. Yeah. Uh like a, as a like a like a Blu-ray extra, but he wasn't the voice in that. So it was it's neat that they actually did pay that little that extra <laughs> to get him uh to do the voices. <laughs> the, and but also the first episode is also like I don't think we're going to see Sonic or Tails again. Yep, yeah. <laughs> and they're definitely not going to speak for the next, for the rest of them <laughs> and yeah. stuff like that. It's like we paid <laughs> we paid high money, good money for the first episode and then it might go a bit uh a bit low uh a bit low tier for the rest of it or a bit cheap. Spoiler alert, Sonic and Tails do not appear again. But you know, it is interesting <laughs> too to think about that how often they do go to the well of Sonic and friends going to Earth. Yeah. Like if like okay, so Adventures of Sonic takes place on Mobius. Mm-hmm. Sonic Sat AM takes place on Mobius. Sonic Underground takes place on Mobius. Three nothing Mobius. But then all of a sudden you got Sonic X. That's not on Mobius, that's on Earth. Right. And then you got the OVA. Where's that? That's it's not really Mobius. It's not really either the doesn't go either way. Uh and then Sonic Boom, I guess that's back to Mobius. But then these three things. These three things. Well, Sonic Boom is just like an island somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sonic, Sonic Boom is, 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 is it's an anomalous land. I mean, Sonic X is Earth, but they don't start on Earth. So that's part of the whole Sonic's an alien thing. Yeah. Right. You know, right. There was that, that brief period where, where Sega was like, oh, yeah, Sonic, there's Sonic's world and there's Earth. And sometimes he's just on Earth. <laughs> and then people would go, what does that mean? How does that work? And Sega would say, we don't know. Why are you asking us? But now we do know. Now we know very Not clearly what one. they meant by two worlds because we have Sonic X and we have these movies. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, I used to very firmly be like, no, it's all one world. It's very, look at Sonic Adventure. This is clearly the same world as Sonic 2. It's just that they're in a place where there's humans now because it's a different type of game. Well, the, the current Tales Tube lore is the islands are where the animals live and the continents are where the... right. The humans are people live <laughs> and ryan you've lived in both so new zealand i presume is all <laughs> oh, yeah. it's, animals you know, and it's, it's uh the south island and north island i mean you know, <laughs> it's where sonic and friends are and uh, checkerboard patterns are everywhere oh. my, my father's office had like a full wall map and 
like I would find South Island on it, like on the New Zealand part, and be like, oh yeah, there's that's where that's Onyx World. Where are you from? Yeah, absolutely. How, how, Christmas, Christmas Island. Right. How far are those two places, South Island and Christmas Island, on a real map? I don't remember where Christmas Island is in real life. <laughs> I'm actually not sure where uh, Christmas Island is kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's like a real yeah. like Hawaii style dot right. oh. sort of thing. But uh, the but New Zealand's like about three hour flight from Australia, I think. Um, and I was on the North Island uh, for most of it. <laughs> I only went to the South Island to go snowboarding. <laughs> But ice caps on ice cap. exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> Actually, on on sort of that, like one of the things I do like, I did like at least with like the Archie comics was that they did try to bring a little bit of Australia to Knuckles at some point. <laughs> oh yeah, because uh, it was like, oh no, the floating island came from uh, Down Under or something like <laughs> That's that. That's right, the Down Under Freedom Fighters. The Down Under Freedom Fighters. Right. Uh, Were they your favorite? Were you like that's representation? <laughs> no, I mean I do appreciate when I do see uh, some representation, and it's weird where Knuckles being an echidna wasn't actually that big of a thing in Sega World Sydney, which I never actually went to. But he, oh. you, you would think oh. that they would really put a whole thing about that in that. Are echidnas native to Australia or New Zealand or both? Uh, from Australia, okay. So echidnas are an Australian animal, but then there you go. You know, very much Japan was like. I don't know, sparky thing, but <laughs> he's got dreadlocks because you know these, you know, various things. They were never looking at Australia as an actual thing. They were just looking at same with like you know, Sonic's not exactly very British uh, in the way that he is. <laughs> uh, though one thing I actually did find is that there are in fact hedgehogs in New Zealand, yeah. and I, there was one night I was driving around at night, and suddenly a hedgehog appeared in the middle of the road, and I was like. What is going? How? What is this? I, I don't lost understand it. it at all. <laughs> I've lost it. I, I've I've completely gone insane. But apparently, uh, a lot of British uh, when people were coming over from Britain to like colonize the country, they brought <laughs> over a hedgehog as like a thing to remind them of their of their home. And then they go out, and then they just kept breeding. And so they're oh, they have the feral best. hedgehogs. Mm -hmm. wow. Uh, wow! I did not expect that at all. <laughs> If you had let him in, you could have been part of the Sonic movie. You could be Tom. And then maybe you would have finally connected to the films in a way you're like, oh, I get it now. Exactly. exactly. I really enjoy those. <laughs> you said you're you are still involved with Sonic fan games, H U or uh what am I trying to ask here? Well, I know you still pay attention to like Sage, if that's what you're trying to Yes. So right, yeah. What I try to I so there's two things on the fan game side. I have uh the Sonic fan game bot that mm -hmm. I sort of set up. Another one of my various Twitter and Tumblr things where it will post about a Sonic fan game every day uh, from the new ones to the old ones. But then on Hedgeblog, when Sage, the Sonic Amateur Games Expo, or the Sonic Hacking Contest is on, I will stop everything that's posting and I will post stuff that's just about those things. And I try to make sure I post one post of literally everything that's on there. And for Sage, that's really hard because there's like hundreds of damn things on there. Yeah, it, it's a lot different. Yeah, the trailer is like five hours long or something. <laughs> yeah, the... tra tra right, because the trailer is like we got to show everything. Right. Yeah, you know, and it's like, oh, I mean, that's nice in one way. But on the other hand, it doesn't make any sense because then you have a 20 minute trailer and who's going to watch that? It means it has to like post like 30 times a day just to yeah. get through the seven days of that thing. OK, right. So because because you were part of it, back in the day uh you're you pay attention to it now uh of those two eras classic and modern fan games like what what was what would you say is your favorite or or maybe top two if the favorite is like super obvious i mean i, I really like where it is now mm -hmm. um and a lot of that is just how much better the tools are to do this stuff in the first place when we were making fan games in the 2000s we had no mm -hmm. idea what we were doing we were basically trying to make uh click and create and uh multimedia fusion do things that it was not meant to do it was basically hacking multi these programs to sort of have mm -hmm. vague ideas of what a sonic game was or the early stuff was just i don't know put a sonic sprite in there and then it would just get stuck to the ceiling of every game and <laughs> oh, that was a feature that was a feature um yeah <laughs> you can get tails to fly in some way was like a, a real feat uh at the time uh but it would just be the same you know in retrospect it's like well they were just using the same angel island sprites for every stage uh <laughs> that stuff but it was as a kid it's a thing the thing is is like as a kid when you are and you know all those people around that time were only 13 14 probably but the fact that you could make a game and make a sonic game was really cool 
and really inspire though you know it could inspire you to actually get into game development now and nowadays the thing is is that if you want to make a sonic game or a sonic hack it couldn't be easier to do one now you could make a level edit of a sonic one or something like that no problem uh, you could make an entirely new sonic game pretty easily with all the different engines that people have made and everything like that but now what it is about for me is what's that new extra thing what's that hook what's that interesting little extra thing that you've done to that game if it's like um there was some where it was like a ooh, a new um a new b- bunch of uh shields or something like that or what the level gimmick is in these ways and that's where like the like a uh, sonic triple trouble 16 bit is really what well, which i i pl- actually played all the way through is like taking stuff that used to be in the game but then taking doing it in a different way or making it fun and interesting and in a different in a different process or in those things like a sonic utopia or something like that it's like okay taking sonic and trying something different what should sonic be in 3d and trying stuff out like that one of my favorites still is one called sonic versus darkness a terrible name uh, (laughs) i would say um but it it basically plays like sonic rush and looks like sonic rush and has combo systems from sonic unleashed if they ported Sonic Rush over to modern consoles, it would play like this, and it would be great. Uh, it was it, it's super fun. It's like the the music in it's great and all that sort of stuff. And, and you know, it's just it's on you know probably hasn't had an update since 2018. But there's some really cool stuff people do. And now it's a case of all those all those people who used to make Sonic games can now actually make their own game. They don't have to make a Sonic game anymore. <laughs> but they get their they try a Sonic game, and then you get yourself a Freedom Planet. Or something like that, where they can actually go, well, I can actually make money off this now. What if I did this as a living? Did you play um, Penny from Evening Star? Yes. Yeah, I did buy that. Uh, and I played a bunch of it too. Nice. And it's 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 really cool. Like, I could see, you know, their inspiration of like, you know, they can't, they feel like it's like, what's a Sonic game but 3D? A classic Sonic game but 3D in a different way. Um, I find it a little bit finicky. I find it's a game which I want to constantly press buttons to like attack. But that's actually not what you really want to do. You really want to like take your time to like do the things in the right order and that sort of thing. So I kind of fall off the edge a lot. <laughs> but uh, it is still a great game uh, with a really cool art style and just a bizarre style, uh, about a bunch of weird stuff to it, which I can see from those guys. And uh, I'm excited for everything that they do now. Yeah, we haven't talked about it in a while, but my older son and I finished it and we wound up really enjoying it uh, aside from there's a, like a really difficult boss where a giant penguin attacks you and man that was almost as hard as fang and superstars <laughs> but not quite i have played through the regular amount of superstars but i have not finished the trip thing ah. so <laughs> good luck that's okay yeah i've watched i've watched everything from it so i don't necessarily have to finish it but i was just like uh <laughs> i you know my older son and i have been playing superstars just kind of off and on the last week or so and Man, when we don't have to play the bosses, you just do time attack. Superstars is really good. Mm. <laughs> All the gimmicks are good. Yeah. It looks great. The bosses are just way too long, and the, the animator got the right to say, "No, I want to show off my cool animations and not, <laughs> uh, and not go through." And and so making it way less fun just because of that. So it happens. But yeah. What about uh, Frontiers? Where did you? How did you feel about Frontiers or the DLC? Did you play a lot of that? I did finish Frontiers. Uh, I have not finished the the extra story stuff. Uh, I got through Knuckles and Amy, and I've actually I have actually played a bunch of Dream Team, but I need to Dream Team. Yeah. Again, the other issue now is that when I'm playing games, a lot of it is it's like not for fun, but to make content. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Dream Team was like me hooking up my phone to my computer to mm. <laughs> to then like try to record it so I could actually get gifts out of it. Um, but that just makes it not as fun either. So yeah. But aesthetically, I like Dream Team. I um, I think it's a. I like some of the stuff that they've done to make it easier to just have to do cool stuff with. Where the um, springs, for example, are just huge. They're like giant, like trampoline mats. <laughs> yeah. Uh, rather than like trying to aim for something. Uh, so that way, it's a lot more fun. Um, but I think I only really got to where they unlocked Knuckles and Rogue. 
a rouge and that point is where i sort of got to but i need to go back to it right. we'll do it right now do it in front of us <laughs> <laughs> well i think let's take a quick break and we'll be right back Okay, welcome back to Sonic Weekly. All right, so here's what's happened. We have allowed Ryan to take a step out of the room so that he does not need to sit through our Knuckles spoilers. We heard his thoughts on Knuckles episode one. But what we're going to do, we've, I mean, so we were saying, Bo has been saying that we're going to cover one episode per week. And then I think, which made sense when, when we thought for one that the episodes were going to be longer. And we thought also that the episodes were going to be maybe more, but really in practice, right? Like it's kind of a one movie broken up into six episodes. And uh, upon reflection, six weeks is a long time. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we would still be talking about this until Father's Day uh, if we <laughs> kept on that, which is appropriate for the show and its themes. But here's what we're going to do, dear listener. So if you are looking to avoid the Knuckles spoilers, Tune out now. We're going to talk about the first three episodes with full spoilers. Next week, we will complete the run with the back three episodes. And that's what you can expect for us talking about Knuckles, the series. So let's talk about episode one. Then let's talk about episode two. And I was thinking maybe if we have time, let's talk about episode three. (laughs) If we have time. If we have time. Right. We might spend all we might spend the next half hour just talking about the first 10 minutes of the show, you know, going frame by frame. We could do you know how they they, there's those podcasts where you talk about the one minute at a time each episode, like an episode of a podcast is about one minute of content. So we could stretch this out till Father's Day 2042 if we really want. Uh, (laughs) And that's the other thing, too. We'll include this link in the description. But, David, with FTCR, Mm -hmm. you've already talked (laughs) at length about Knuckles. I I feel like that conversation is a bit more chaotic. We were were jumping all over the place. It it was... um, Def, yeah. Um, so if, if you want to hear also smoothies is in that conversation. So if you miss him, you're like, hey, why isn't he here, he here all the time? You can you can hear his dulcet tones over. It's just uh, uh, at FTCR on YouTube somewhere. Yeah. Find it. Now that Chris has been on the show, we're like cousin shows. Yeah. You know, we're we got to get the whole FTCR crew here in at one time. Right. For a full crossover episode, but, but but give us the the preview if we if we haven't clicked over to FTCR yet. What right. what's the postage stamp version of the David take? The David take. Well, all right. Um, it was. It's basically. I I enjoyed it up to a point. It's completely insane, but it's it's insane. I think mostly in a good way. Like I like the fact that they took a risk and went. We're gonna make a crazy Sonic related show because I feel like. A lot of things are safe and a lot of things are on brand and that's fine and dandy. But there's a part of me that misses 90s insanity and Knuckles in some ways delivers on it. In other ways, not as much. I feel like the first half is stronger than the second half. So we'll be talking about the stuff that, you know, without spoiling anything, this is probably the stuff that I think is is the stronger of Knuckles. Um, And then it sort of falters. But I yeah, I, I think the first three, it's basically this is insane and I'm all in for it is how we'll describe the first half. (laughs) My reaction was pretty similar. I I felt like the first two episodes were like, oh, this is pretty good. And then three and four, I was like, oh, this is really good. This is pretty unique and funny. And then five and six, I felt like fell off a bit. And uh, yeah, we'll get into the specifics on that more. But just in terms of broad thoughts on the series. I think, yeah, I think that's right. Like three and four are the craziest and also reach the highest heights. Yes, uh okay so the show as it begins first of all we just see all the preview uh videos that came out before the show so knuckles with the dog and those antics Mm -hmm. which is a bit confusing you know because it's like the animal thing i guess it's just like bringing that over from the games of like some animals are sentient like knuckles or like they can talk and other animals are normal animals who cannot talk like the dog right but has Knuckles interacted with dogs before? Like, does Knuckles think the dog can talk? Uh, it's a little confusing. You know, one yeah. one thing that rubbed me the wrong way is Knuckles attacks the construction crew. Okay, yeah, funny, good joke. He, he didn't know what a construction crew was. But then Sonic or Tails comes in with, oh, man, that's the fourth one this this month. And, well, oh, man, you ruined the joke because it's like he's naive. No, wait, he's just dumb. Yeah. Right. It was also inconsistent with the show overall 
a little bit of like how freaked out are how freaked out are people by Knuckles? Because <laughs> even in the same episode of episode one, Knuckles at the end of the episode goes to a bowling alley with Wade. Mm -hmm. Nobody bats an eye until the gun agents, Willoughby and Mason, played by the Uma Thurman looking woman with the British accent and Kid Cudi. And we don't meet the we don't meet the Game of Thrones villain in episode one. I don't do we the buyer. Do we meet the buyer? No, I don't think so. He comes in a little refer to the buyer. Yes, he yeah. he's just a vague concept at this point. We do see is that in episode one where we see just a hint of oh the mushroom planet still exists and uh, yeah they dispose oh, yeah. of the right they get rid of the, the first yeah, yeah. Uh, gun guy one is <laughs> unnamed gun agent is now a mushroom man so we'll see what happens to him probably nothing we'll never find out uh <laughs> yeah it it uh, the the question about oh do, how do people react to knuckles that 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 is a good question because I guess in Green Hills by itself. Uh, the population got used to has, are now used to Sonic the Hedgehog, so having two other pe two other of his kind is fine. But when they go to that like glow in the dark neon, you know, it's bowling time. That is a different bowling alley than the one that we start off with Wade and his bounty hunter best friend, who's not Fang the sniper. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like the the whole thing is oh we're tracking knuckles cuz they left green hill right. they go to a random bowling alley if that was the green hill bowling alley i could go like okay they've accepted sonic and his friends this is just someplace random it yeah he's not in a disguise he's just there i it's like the show went eh, who cares are we really going to spend 20 minutes people looking at knuckles funny or have him be dressed up like let's just do it it's knuckles we don't care we've got to do yeah, some I comedy think that's the right choice <laughs> yeah it's just go with it, but then like don't use it as a thing. Like yeah. the mom faints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think we're probably all on the same page here, which is we we want it to be like Sonic Adventure, where right. it's just not just... really totally explained. <laughs> but they're just there, and everyone treats it as pretty normal, and that's fine. And it's only weird in Sonic Adventure Two when there's two identical looking hedgehogs. But again, otherwise it would be right. pretty normal for them. Yeah. I mean, I guess even in Sonic Two, the movie when they go to the uh... Where are they? Is it is it Russia? Siberia. Siberia. Yeah, Siberia. Yeah. Right. Like they are in disguise at first, but when they discover, hey, that's a hedgehog and a fox, they they're mostly okay with it. They're like, we're going to react to you like any outsider, but once you prove yourself by dance, we have fully accepted you. We will not question your alien heritage. So maybe. Yeah. Everything's fine. Sort of a tangent. I read a book series once, and in the second book, the main character like gets plastic surgery so the bad guys won't recognize him anymore and i think the author thought like okay like this was the last book i you know i'm done with this but then he has to write a bunch more and then the first <laughs> couple after that like he's got to do every time he meets with somebody like oh man you look different and then like a few later he's like you know what screw it like anytime you meet somebody from the past they already know we don't have to explain this anymore <laughs> the thing is with sonic i feel like the disguise part has never been a thing that I need with the character or the lore. That's a Ninja Turtles thing that they have to put on trench coats and sneak into society. Mm -hmm. But Sonic, I feel like, is more just integrated, more just like just normally within the world. And it kind of annoys me in the movies and in the show when they make a point of reminding us that he's an alien. It's, we know he's an alien. We we saw how he got here. But like, if everybody could get, adopt that Green Hill. You know, think if if Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles were to become world famous through defeating Doctor Robotnik, and then everyone's like, "Oh, there's aliens," but they look like that. So, okay, cool. And then they were fine. Yeah. Well, you would imagine the Master Emerald instant would have been major news. So <laughs> you think maybe it just hasn't diffused everywhere yet. Yeah. Maybe it was only covered by the local papers. Right. <laughs> yeah. It didn't get, didn't make national news in the Sonic no. universe. Well, Gun probably is able to like yeah control that them. stuff up. Yeah control the flow of information there looking at the first episode especially highlighted to me knuckles looks great and sonic and tails still look off to me is it the forehead wrinkles because boy uh. those forehead wrinkles are i don't know <laughs> is it the lighting i don't know what changed but maybe it's just my perception they never nailed sonic's eyes like i mean obviously big improvement from ugly sonic which uh, five years since the ugly sonic trailer we should talk about that oh yeah and tails to me has always looked a little uncanny valley okay yeah. But Knuckles looks awesome. Yeah, I do kind of think that they almost get better with each character introduction. Yeah. So maybe Shadow will just be 
like a render from <laughs> Sonic Shadow Generations. <laughs> I'm I'm done with that. Uh, maybe. Uh, I, I mean, I, I guess that makes sense. But but also, I think there is something about the lighting. I think they weren't spend they weren't spending as much time or money on Sonic and Tails because oh spoilers this is the only time we're seeing Sonic and Tails like yeah yeah that that's it if they're a one and done I mean the show is called Knuckles we're following Knuckles on his journey his magical journey yeah I mean because even if you look at Sonic and Tails and go oh that maybe does doesn't look quite right the 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 spirit of Pachacamac even though he's definitely acts different and looks different from the games like he's still I think he looks just on his own looks like a pretty good model. So yeah, he looks good. I agree. Yeah. I yeah. think they just spent He's... more time and money on the echidnas and we're like, sorry, Sonic, you, you get a movie in a few what? months. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. But the other thing I realize is how much I dislike Ben Schwartz as Sonic relative to mm. Idris Elba as Knuckles. Interesting. He's just so whiny sounding to me. Like I like Tails. I think Colleen does a great job in the games and in the movies, but Man, Ben Schwartz never worked for me. Oh, yeah. I like Roger Craig Smith. I like Devin Mackey. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I don't know. I guess I've gone back and forth on the Ben Schwartz voice because it is it is different. It's a younger sounding Sonic. Yeah, and it's it's definitely he's got a different sort of personality. It's it's the same traits, but it's like a different generation's expression of those traits. And you know, I think a lot of that comes from the writers and producers wanting to make Sonic the kid in the movie rather than being like the friend figure to the kid. So they want the young audience to be able to identify with Sonic. So I think, but still, I, yeah, I don't know. At this point, I've like kind of just gotten on board with it. So I think I do like it, but yeah, like, like I was just saying, like, I think they get better with each one because patch, patch a Yeah. Close enough. Uh, yeah. is great fun. You could call him Mac. <laughs> call him Mac. You could call him Mac. Yeah. He looks, he looks great. I, I like that Knuckles can see ghosts. Yes. I, I definitely agree. It's a very strange way that episode one goes about exchanging the information. Knuckles learns about Wade wanting to become a bowler from Patrick and Mac. <laughs> right. But Wade could have just come over maybe to give Maddie a ride because she needed, because the car <sighs> as a plot point is no longer in commission. Also, Sonic's right there. It's kind of rude. Sonic could carry you to work and he's the fastest thing alive. That would be I, fine. Tails could carry you, air carry you to work. Yeah. And that would be great. I mentioned this in our Discord. My wife suggested they should have excused Tom's absence with, oh, he's got jury duty. That would have been what a just as brilliant. Tom oh, is at jury duty makes... because James Marsden was in jury duty of the show. Right. Uh, and they could have been like, man, he got sequestered. Right. He's going to be locked up there for a long time. That makes a lot more sense than I yeah, guess he's just be... out of town. Out of town where? Where does he go? Nowhere. <laughs> yeah, that's a great He's point. wanted to go to San Francisco forever and then decided not to. It's not like his family, like he grew up somewhere else. His his dad and his dad and that dad before them, like he is one of a long line of sheriffs in this town. The where the hell are you, Tom? I'm just gonna pretend like they did say he's got jury duty. I mean, they yeah. should have said he's got jury duty because the show also makes a point of making it known what movies are in in the universe and not in the universe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at one point, this may be in episode one as well. It's in the first, it's early. Yeah. Wade is driving and Knuckles is in the passenger seat and he says, oh, we got Munson out in the middle of nowhere. That's a direct reference to Kingpin where Roy Munson's name becomes synonymous with failure. And it's a joke in the movie of like, oh, we got Munson. And he's like, what, what are you talking about Munson? Uh, so Kingpin takes place in the Sonic universe or, or admittedly, Wade has just seen that movie a lot and is referencing it. <laughs> but also Kill Bill takes place in this universe because they reference getting a sword. Yes, from that's right. Hanzo Hattori. The sword maker from, what's the name? Hanzo Hattori. All right. Is that Hattori Hanzo. One of the right. two. So is that a, yes, yes. Right. Okay. Cause it's been forever since I've watched Kill Bill. Like, is that a character created for those movies or is that actually a type of sword you can get in real life? In the, in the movies they go and visit him to get the sword okay correct yeah it's a fictional character i believe in kill bill who makes one of a kind amazing swords and so when they're referencing one of a kind amazing swords they say it's made by the same person right so kill bill and kingpin are in right. the sonic universe okay, well, but when we see wade's bedroom in episode three and four yes we see tons of posters on the wall mm -hmm. so the big lebowski is a movie like speed Yes. Keanu Reeves is an actor. He is an actor. That has been referenced multiple times. He also has a lot 
of DVDs in his childhood bedroom, <laughs> which include the Dumb and Dumber saga, which means Jim Carrey exists as an actor in this world. <laughs> they should do the Ocean's 12 thing, right? Where like, yeah, Julia Roberts plays the husband or the, I'm sorry, Julia Roberts plays the ex-wife to George Clooney, who's Danny Ocean. Mm -hmm. And then to help out the gang of thieves, she gives them a distraction by imitating Julia Roberts, but everyone's like, you don't look anything like her. But of course, it's played by Julia Roberts. Ha 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 ha, says well, the audience. We out. get that. We get this little bit of metal humor. So Jim Carrey could meet Dr. Robotnik. We have the technology. That's right. Wow. Speaking of meta humor, maybe we, I don't know if this is too big of a tangent, but maybe the best acting or actor casting meta humor I've ever seen is at Arrested Development, where Justine Bateman is hitting on Jason Bateman. <laughs> he thinks... Yeah, that she might be his long lost sister, right. realizes that she's not and then starts hitting on her. And the audience is just cringing because they know that the actors are actually siblings. in real life. They are, yeah. in fact, siblings. Uh -huh. That was a show with great casting all around. Is Arrested Development uh, a show that exists mm. in the Sonic universe or is it a is, is it a. A show is it a show they watch or part of it? First three seasons exist in the Sonic universe, which is why it's the better universe. We should go there. <laughs> but the Netflix seasons, yeah, never yeah. happened. Actually, I I, re I think the season four is actually genius. But right, that is pretty hot. Take. I'd be okay with cutting it off at four. Yeah, or yeah. at three rather. Okay. Um, okay. This show not as funny as Arrested Development. <laughs> Even now, you know the show's Arrested Development is over twenty years old, but it, it holds up. It does have some of the DNA, or at least some of the DNA of predecessor scrubs where like you'll see something and then it'll be undercut as a fantasy episode two yes is all that right like it's episode two i would say of the first three is my least favorite of the three because knuckles is the, the <laughs> knuckles so the critics were kind of right about knuckles not being in the show a lot it, he is and then he definitely isn't like right spends a lot of time trapped yes exactly in in episode one there's knuckles episode two no knuckles episode three lots of knuckles episode four about knuckles but not a lot of knuckles in it episode five just straight up no knuckles this is not a knuckles show and then six knuckles is back so you get three out of six episodes being really with knuckles and then you get bonus episodes is the way to view them you get it's like what if we could learn the backstory of luppy luppy man <laughs> i guess I'm in. and it's like I'm in. yeah knuckles just goes along with luppy luppy man to his family dinner yeah. and you're like wait oh god this is how they regard him and yeah wade looks like a man who would come up with luppy luppy in this universe that's a missed opportunity that should have been like <laughs> he's going through his childhood bedroom journal is like i've got a great new expression luppy yeah. it's a combination right. of happy and lucky and then knuckles just <laughs> comes up with luppy luppy or something like that we may have to get Pat on the phone and see if we can <laughs> still get that into movie three. Right. Uh, <laughs> I think I mean, we'll get more into it in the second half, but uh, Iblis being such a big, big component is not something I expected. Because in that short, right? I mean, we were just talking about this, but like in that drone come home short, mm -hmm. that was an extra for the movie two DVD. Idris Elba is the one voice who's not mm -hmm. there it's a different they get a different person right yeah i like his voice i like this take i was i you know there is the other thought to the voice that some people miss the Raphael of the ninja turtles sounding like game voice i, I could kind of see that in the same way where you're talking about with ben schwartz as sonic where it kind of just like you are expecting a certain thing and you get something different it's like not necessarily bad it's just not what you were expecting and I guess I fully like this version of Knuckles' voice. I would say more than the game voice, but at least equally. I've enjoyed some of the game voices, like the original McGarren I liked, and then you know, some of the others, okay, fine. <laughs> I don't really care for the current game one that much, but mm -hmm. Elba's really good. It's very distinctive, too. Like it's You can't say, oh, he's doing Raphael from the Ninja Turtles. Whereas with the, some of the game knuckles, you kind of can be like, yeah, that, that could also be Raphael. I also feel like his voice wouldn't work with any version of the character that's not just like obsessed with honor and duty and glory as a warrior. Y yeah, it would feel weird if Idris Elba was coming out of Knuckles in Sonic Frontiers. Like, it just wouldn't. Yeah. I, I feel Who like. Really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if we take it a step away from that, like, it would definitely feel weird in, say, his moments in Lost World. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, because he, he's dialing it up yeah. in every line. Like, he's overacting the entire time. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's very distinctive. It's a distinctive tone. 
presence and makes sense for this version of Knuckles because it is removed from how game Knuckles is. There, There is still like, oh, they've been alone forever. But Knuckles has been on a journey in this universe. He's always been on the go. He's always had to fight people. He's always like, presumably, it's just been hardship all over the place. In the games, it's just been seclusion. But otherwise, I guess his needs are met. Like, he doesn't have to worry where he's going to sleep, what he's going to eat. Like, the, the Angel Island is a self-sustaining biome. Uh, and but but this knuckles I guess has just been through a whole lot more. Also, he was around a bunch of people and lost them all at once, which is going to just scar you. Game knuckles, game knuckles. We don't know when he lost his parents, and presumably there wasn't anyone else hanging around. So they're already coming from different places. Which I think e- either version makes sense that he sees ghosts. Like, what else are you going <laughs> to do? But go crazy? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I. If the mushroom planet was Angel Island, I would say that the canon could work across the board because it's not it's all I I would I wouldn't want to use AI to figure this out. It's just more of like I wonder how weird or wrong or maybe not that wrong it would sound to hear Ben Schwartz and Idris Elba doing the Sonic and Knuckles scenes from Frontiers. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, they are different characters. So maybe give even Ian a chance to take another pass at some of the phrasing. But I think, you know, I th- it's just, they're different performances. They're different things. Uh, they are different characters, but not too many degrees apart because they are still Sonic and Knuckles. Like they're still coming from same source generally. Knuckles being like well-traveled in the universes works in the second movie because you kind of need somebody who knows how the dimensions work and what the mushroom planet is. Right. And I guess like Tails can fill that role because Tails right and weirdly watching Sonic from afar and Yeah. Tails helps to inform Sonic and then Knuckles just knows it outright, which I guess is also why, hey, who cares about rings anymore? Uh we do see we see the the human characters have rings in this, which yeah. um is that's interesting. I don't know where they came from. How did, does that mean that Uncle Chuck? <laughs> yeah, baby. Did the predecessor of Gun? Because it's also established, hey, Gun is new. Like the name Gun is new, but it seems to be the same organization that has existed for a significant amount of time. At least fifty years. Right. So that so then it's like, have they had access to rings this whole time? Are they aware of interplanet tra- interplanetary travel in that way, or did they? collect them at one of the opportunities that Sonic has lost them. Although, right, we he lost some in San Francisco and move like he dropped yeah. them. He picks them up. Maybe there were a couple missing. And then he but also he drops loses them, them in Siberia. He, That's yeah, right. he too. Like, and he doesn't doesn't get those ones back. He doesn't get those but back. You're, at all. you're absolutely right that the gun agents having it does open storytelling possibilities too because if 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 gun has been hopping planets this whole time then that's an easy way to get rouge and amy into movie three and and have it maybe somehow work uh like because it's such a narratively easy way to be like i still think it's you know i i'm not getting my hopes up because i do think it's going to be so shadow focused but just cut you know who I, like in. i don't want it to get bogged down in the details of Oh, Sonic's only got five rings left. You know, I think right. they should. I, I th- like, the more I that think, they're just sort of zipping around, yeah, all for I, it. I think they threw away the Sonic has a limited amount of rings. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's something they even tried to downplay a little bit in the final version of the film. In the novelization, it there's a very big deal about like Sonic only has a handful of rings left, and and it's like it seems like a really big deal. How many do you have in the movie? Yeah, he's got a bag of them. It seems like it's a limited amount. They disappear when they're done, but he isn't as like precious. Oh, I have to use if I use this wrong, I don't have another chance. It, it seems yeah, he's like he's using them for weddings. Yeah, right. And they could fly. And now that Tails is here and Knuckles is here, it also feels like Tails can go. Oh, I know. Yeah, I've where you can buy like a thousand of these. Uh, and right. like so that that plot point is gone, and I'm kind of glad. Like. Let's not worry about how many rings we have. Yeah, yeah, I think that stuff can be solved in, in other media, as the Wikipedia section would be called. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the gun agents, we should probably talk about them because they're the bulk of uh, episode two, along with Wade's fantasy sequence. Mm-hmm. His Spotify playlist, which is available. You can 
listen to it right now. Oh, really? On Spotify. Yeah. Oh, I did not know. I did, I did not know that. that. There's a whole music conversation we got to have, too. Oh, right. There is a lot of licensed yeah. music in the show. Some of it, I think, works great. Some of it is just filling. The Warrior yeah. being a Knuckles song uh, as the theme song. I'm like, oh, that. Mm-hmm. yeah, that works for me. And it has to be an 80s song like that because... The 90s became too self-aware and semi-ironic. And if you had a song as earnest as that, it would have to be a joke right. or done with a smirk. Yeah, yeah. And that's not the Knuckles character. No. That's a great point yeah. because and I was actually... The only place you can go for that kind of music now is Sonic video games. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe country music. I put a, I You know, I, I, I will include this link in the description because I, uh, you know, not to brag, put together a pretty great Sonic and Knuckles 30 playlist inspired by some of the, particularly of the episode four music, the musical episode, which getting ahead of myself. Right. So the music is a whole conversation. The gun agents are also a whole conversation. Yeah. Um, They are in the show quite a bit up front, then recede quite a lot. Then, then you don't hear from them and then they come back at the end. Yeah. I, I think that is one of the things that sort of, that bothers me about the show is is when they do vanish and they've been replaced with three i get right at the end of episode two wade rescues knuckles episode three wade has dinner with his mother the the shot shabbat shabbat i'm not shabbat. jewish shabbat. shabbat okay so i don't yeah so he has dinner with his mother his sister they're having a grand old time but then we also find out that wade just like i guess what happened to tom uh is now wanted by the law it's not this it's not exactly the same because I did look at the, the episode, pause it when you see the Wade Whipple wanted poster. And at the bottom, it does say that Wade is not a danger to anyone except himself. <laughs> like it is very, <laughs> yeah. But right. But it is, it is weird. Like, okay, so somehow the gun agents have put a bounty on his head. It must have nothing to do with actual law enforcement because you'd think somebody would notice hey, why is Wade suddenly wanted? Like the government was behind tom being wanted uh this it's two rogue gun agents it doesn't quite work as well but then also hey now we're just seeing random uh a random bounty hunter who happens to have seen it and goes let's find his mother's house it would make a bit more sense if they were directly like they went to a shady bar and found the bounty hunters and said hey we need yeah that was the missing scene right yeah yeah, that's the scene. Not, hey, we just happened to find Wade's photo in a pile of printed wanted posters. Because, like, when did you print those? Yeah, yeah. It's, Why, that's like, another thing. Like the, little, the yeah. yeah, just the the way the characters get information sometimes is just so strange mm-hmm. that it 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 takes you out of it a little bit. But it, I, episode three, I, I I think is my favorite of of the first three. Really funny. Episode two, though, I guess yeah. I guess what I want to talk about briefly is just like. Yeah, how do we feel about just the villains introduced so far, which would be the bounty hunter Jack in the bowling alley and then the two gun agents and do we so in episode 2 do we meet the buyer? They refer to the buyer, but they just refer to right. still don't see him. See they're him. they're like, "Oh, in the first 3 we don't see him." Is that no. right? Right. And also the the friend is is not presented as like a proper villain. He's just like there there's some more stuff with him later because we're not talking about yeah. the second half. But here in, in that first episode, he's just like, hey, I'm your hero or your, your, your unseen best friend. I'm like, I, I could have sworn Tom was supposed to be Wade's yeah. best friend, but I guess not. It's this guy, Jack, who has Knuckles' hat. And he is like, I'm going to stop your bowling dreams because, whoa, what, what does Wade want to do? He wants to bowl to, I guess, prove himself to his father, who is a, who is a, a bowling legend. So I guess it is sort of a villain-ish, and that's why Knuckles takes him in. Still don't really know why Pachacamac is so invested in, in Wade winning a bowling <laughs> tournament. Uh, but it is... Yeah, so really, the, the, the only true villains are, right, the two gun agents and unnamed bounty hunters who destroy... Uh, is, it, is it Wanda? Wanda Whipple? Or is it Wendy Whipple? One is the sister and one is the mother, and they're so close to each other. Everyone's Wanda a w. is the sister. Wanda's the Wendy, sister. Wendy, Wendy is, is the mother. Yeah, like we could look it up. We're not going to. We exactly. Yes. Um, Knuckles does have an active conversation about pretty woman. <laughs> he says, "What does he say?" He says, "Like 
streetwalker or, or yeah. An, a late, yeah like he i never in a, in a million years would have thought that knuckles would ever refer to the world's oldest profession <laughs> there's, there's a lot of firsts in this series I, that I that is true that's true uh i mean just him engaging in in the jewish tradition him acknowledging the jewish religion exists knuckles says jewish and i'm like whoa he, he's actually referencing real religion as opposed to there's a god he's called chaos <laughs> he's the god of destruction mm -hmm. i like knuckles that's a good joke. Oh, so funny. Every time. Yeah. That worked. Mm -hmm. I agree. Oh, I, so if we're I talking about episode... on, oh, God. on villains. Yes. I think there's one too many. I think Willoughby and Mason would have been plenty. You don't need the buyer. Yeah. I, I got to agree there. Like it should have been like those two are in cahoots and then one turns on the other and gets a little too uh, power hungry or something at the end. The buyer was extraneous. I think I feel the same way, but in reverse, maybe I like, I guess I like the buyer not having a name. I think it's just kind of cool that he's like, yeah, buyer. I like that he directly worked with Robotnik and I like that he's basically a proto Robotnik. Uh, he's like a wannabe Robotnik straight up. I, I like that he's like a gruff snively, basically. He looks cool. I'll give you that. He lo yeah, he looks cool. And I felt like I, I kind of wanted uh, Willoughby and Mason to be even cartoonier than they were yeah a little more team rocket or whatever exactly uh because they were not grounded it was not so, it was they were not believable you know fbi you weren't confusing them for Mulder and scully it wasn't like grounded in reality so i wanted them to be like i mean she does have like you know they've got little quirks but more exaggeration i think would have been more fun and i think that's kind of why i prefer the buyer but i think also david had a really good point that if they had just connected them more yeah like if they had just like had them working together have more scenes together early on that would have i think been a little more compelling early on with the villain plot lines because it did feel very just string in a bunch of places yeah it's just sort, sort of random because you're just hoping that maybe this will happen because it, it could have been like no we're just going out drinking we won't look for wade this week or nobody will even think to look at his mother's house like he just it's just a little i know like, hey, you got to have things happen. It's the convenience factor in a story. But it is... Uh, I, would, it would have been nice to have a bit more of that connective tissue. Just in general. Yeah. I think anything you don't like in this show, though, you, you can kind of headcanon it as, well, Wade was just imagining that part. <laughs> because we're not 100% sure of everything that's real and what's not real. Yeah, that's a good point. Episode two really... Which is... I didn't know how to feel about that at the time. And I still don't because I, again, same thing. It's like the reality is already pretty heightened. It's like, Oh, I could see Wade being cool. That's the thing that's unbelievable. So him in a tux and doing cool things, that's definitely not real, but I guess it could be like, why is this any stupider than anything else that's happened? Right. I, um, I said, I said earlier, like the show's going to hit different in, if you're seven and my not quite seven year old, thought the physical comedy of like all the fireworks going off at the same time was like perfect. Like, <laughs> I did kind of like the payoff of it. Yeah. I, the accident. Yeah. And then he finds the robo glove and that like throws him through the window and then he's got to fight Kid Cudi. And... Right. Kid Cudi is, uh, he's got the upper hand almost the entire time until somehow Wade knocks him out with one hit. And it's like, Oh, that was... No, he hits him in the eye with hot sauce after he's distracted right. by his mom calling. Oh, yeah, that's all he does. He hits him with hot sauce. Yeah. That's enough. He doesn't even, like, hit him properly. <laughs> yeah, so and it looks like blood, so it looks worse than it is. But also right. hot sauce in the eyes probably is. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't want hot, like... Yeah, that was pretty old... bad. Yeah. yeah. But I, I wouldn't want to get punched by a giant robot glove either. No, I feel like that would be the thing that knocks you out cold. Uh, that, mm. I will say this upright. There are plenty of times where Wade probably should be dead. Mm -hmm. uh before the series like i think when knuckles throws the weights at him that might do it right there could have been yeah. over before it started yeah like wade should have died before <laughs> episode one ended uh <laughs> i guess that we are in heightened cartoon reality <laughs> i feel like there are times where it, it feels even more cartoony than it does in the in the movies proper yeah well yeah and I, it, like they telegraph that of mm -hmm. like the movies are going to be a little bit more serious like oh do you uh, do I look like I need your power? And then they immediately undercut it in the show. Right. I don't know if I, I that that line also kind of took me out of it. I, I liked it because it's like, how would he know? I'm, I mean, maybe he was monitoring Knuckles if it happened 
whatever. I don't know. It just takes me out of it because I'm like, ah, that's a ah callback. Ah, right. Right. But you do, and then you do need his power. They say it. Their quills are still a big uh, right. Quills are a big deal. Uh, ro- big big giant hands. They got the robot stuff. They got the robot guns. Um, man. Well, that I feel like damage. the quills works with game. Eggman mm-hmm. too. Like, yeah. why is he capturing? You know, if the games are all taking place on Sonic's world, two worlds theory, <laughs> or in the on the islands, one world theory, right? Then he, it's like going to Krypton or like Kryptonite or Kryptonians coming to Earth and being super powerful because the relative difference of the sun. So all of the animals, even the little Pockies and Rickies, are essentially atomic bombs Whoa. that could power. Eggman's craziest inventions and Sonic and friends are not only nuisances, but also oh, if only he could like roboticize them, then he would have real power. So I feel like right. that could, it, that's also like a little bit of a wild tangent question here. If Archie comics <laughs> and Ken Penders never had the lawsuit and the knuckles lore from the Archie comics is on the table to be adaptable. Do you want, Archimedes, do you want the Australian fire ant on the shoulder calling Knuckles, oi, you dumb piece of... I don't know what he would sound like. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't want them to take it wholesale. Like, I don't know if... Yeah, no. Hey, let's introduce not. Archimedes. But I feel like you could definitely cherry pick certain elements from the Archie Knuckles lore. Definitely, like, establish knuckles heritage if you wanted to talk about previous echidnas like you could definitely use the framework even if you're not using echidnopolis itself you don't think they'd do the laura sue chronicles <laughs> it's coming soon yeah i mean that could have been that could have you know right i don't know if they'd ever go as far as to say we're adapting laura sue but they want a whole marvel universe david how much material is there they're gonna be like ah right we need characters and i can't do a big well i think because at the moment there was that thing going around on twitter where it's like hey these are apparently the the things that they got the license for these specific games right we talked about it so that included like it it includes 06 and it includes the, the classic games and adventure one and two writers yeah like that by itself, it is somewhat limiting if you want to go crazy and do like a million spinoffs. I don't know if they should really do a million spinoffs. Yeah. But if they had access to everything that was ever in Archie and access to everything that was ever in Fleetway and access to all the shows, like, yeah, you you can go wild and crazy and do like a proper amalgamation of all these different interpretations of Sonic and his world and create something uh, truly, truly grand at the very, like, it's grand a good word? Uh <laughs> It would be something. It, it would, would be, be something. a different. It would, it would be, be very something. different. Mm-hmm. And it, but it's it's kind of interesting to think about because as we talk, let's. I mean, let's talk about episode three. So the Shabbat dinner mm-hmm. is the standout of the. It, it that's where it's like, oh, this is a comedy show. Yes, and it's featuring Sonic characters, which is Sonic Boom. I think is is the high watermark for the TV shows for me because it's got the best joke ratio. Uh, it's it's the funniest one, so I I like that. And now I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah. It's also got the fight scene in it. It's got I was trying to remember what happens in it. Yes. Uh, but yeah, the bounty hunters come punch, punch. We see Knuckles in action. They destroy that house. At some point. The candles are saved. In the episode two, maybe was it? We see Knuckles glide. Yeah. With Wade yes. on his back. Yeah. A little E.T. They do the E.T. Homage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not sure if you caught that, uh, <laughs> dear viewer. Uh, it was very subtle the <laughs> way that they did the uh, they did the Amblin logo. Yeah, they did. Well, you know, ET that was uh, an indie movie. Mm-hmm. I don't think a lot of people saw it. Uh, <laughs> well, the whole series is very '80s tinged, which Bo made a good point on earlier with the Warrior how it how it kind of fits the the earnestness fits Knuckles' personality. But I thought that was interesting too. Of like, it's not. You know, Knuckles is a 90s character, but yeah. maybe he is 80s at heart. I mean, I guess it's because Wade would have grown up in the 80s. And since even though it's called Knuckles, it's really Wade and Knuckles. And if it's focusing on Wade and his issues, like he's he's clearly dealing, he's, you know, he's dealing with childhood abandonment. He's dealing with a dysfunctional household. I guess him feeling like he's a bit of a joke. So maybe, you know, he's like, he hasn't fully grown up himself. This is also part of his self-discovery, him, you know, becoming his own person. 
So it makes sense that like when things seemed simpler, it was when he was a child in the 1980s. Uh, Knuckles wouldn't have that cultural touchstone because wherever he was a kid, he, it was in the jungle. And then I guess when he was fighting other things that we'll talk about next week, it makes sense, but it does feel a little weird because Sonic is such a 90s property. That's when it had arguably its greatest success until now. So I, I don't know. I, I, I like it. But at the same time, I do, I'm a little confused by it. Yeah, as I said, like, what, what's the 90s music that would even work, though? Like, right. I, Nirvana forever. I don't know. <laughs> they they, they yeah. do play uh, Blink-182 briefly. Uh, that's a good so point. That, that is, uh, yeah, that's a good cue. Because also when Wade is like, oh, look at the mixes. Like, it's uh, his, his Wade, that mix CD is from 1999. Right. So, like, yeah, he was definitely connecting to things in the 90s. And I know in the 90s, like, he would listen to songs in the 80s. 80s were still somewhat cool, right? I don't know. Uh, Bo, question for you. Um, I know you've seen through episode four. Should we, t- uh, do we have time? Should we talk? And you said you might not be here next week. That's true, yes. probably won't be here next week. So, and given that we're talking about the music, four is the music episode, should we stretch and talk about episode four? Or let's, let's stretch it. Okay. Okay, well, will you lead us off with uh, talking about episode four? I, I think episode four is the best one. It is the weirdest in concept. It's got the least knuckles, but it it has that like Lonely Island guy humor way more than director uh, the rest of them do, and I like that. And yep, I like just like the stupid song of like I'm gonna hit Facebook Market plays up like that's still in my head from watching it. <laughs> yeah, and Michael Bolton singing the Flames of Disaster. That's a hook. Who would have imagined? Imagine telling 10 year old you someday there. Well, would you even know who's going to be a Bolton game is. called Sonic 2006? Right. <laughs> you gotta, yeah. You, you'd have a lot of explaining I, to do. No, I would have yeah. been like, no, these two cultural figures, Knuckles and Michael Bolden are at the peak of their powers right now. I don't see how that could possibly diminish. <laughs> of course, this makes sense. That's yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. So 10 year old, you uh, has already foreseen this. 10 year old man uh, is not at all surprised. Okay. That's by good. That's good. Any of this. Well, I was surprised. Even the your Matakon's involvement was something that when the show was reported, it was definitely interested in. Love the Lonely Island, have for a long time, love their movies and stuff. So you see too, like the, and Michael Bolton, I mean, they must just have like a, this is like the you know they've collaborated a number of times SNL and yeah a couple times with did him. a Netflix yeah. special and some other things but just so fun to I go okay and then there's the uh, the Iblis trigger the Flames of Disaster the name <laughs> yes. of the song is Flames of Disaster featuring Michael Bolton there's also a, a song uh, at the end credits which is also pretty fun of just like a Knuckles theme song uh, but the musical number Flames of Disaster tells the tale of what this version of knuckles origin is and it's you know one that doesn't involve angel island or the master emerald but it does involve right uh sonic 06 in a way that i liked and thought was creative and a good use of lore excellent use of lore i am intrigued so like they explicitly reference longclaw as the author of knuckles troubles as a as a youth and is that going to come up with sonic eventually Right. Uh, episode four, I, I definitely, okay, like just by itself in a bubble, not thinking about anything aside from Knuckles, the show, I think it, it, it's fun. The, the costumes are good. The, the, the fact that there's an Iblis puppet, I think is, is amazing. <laughs> like the fact yeah, that's Iblis and it's a puppet and it's in my face. Like, yeah, I'm all, I'm all for that. Running through the special stages. Oh yeah. There's, the, uh, the side scrolling zone. There's a lot of neat little things. I think the song took a moment for for me to get into it. It actually, I, I don't think it was until Michael Bolton started singing properly that I was into it. Yeah. There's also like, I don't know if it's coincidental or done on purpose, but man, there's a puppet. It's Knuckles' dad. Kind of looks like Ken Penders. I don't know. <laughs> it really that. does. Yeah. He's, the the oh, stash, wow. the glasses. I'm like, oh God, oh, that's wow. Knuckles. But when, when it comes to like the lore and what is happening here, that is sort of where I'm like, I don't know how I feel about it in the in the grander implication, because like it, it uses the 06 stuff. That's great. But man, it, it does. It's like, OK, 
we're being told a story and Knuckles sees his dad die and there's a million owls and they kill all the echidnas. And it's like, that's not, it's not what happened. We know that's not what happened. <laughs> Knuckles' tribe went off to kill Longclaw and kidnap Sonic to use his, to either just force him to do whatever, or I don't know, maybe kill him and just har- harvest his squills. Like I, we don't know what they were going to do. It's presented like, okay, a bunch of bad owls killed Knuckles' dad and Knuckles is sad. And now he has to go on a journey, but that journey has nothing to do with the master Emerald. It's a journey to get some superpower from a demon. And we're just doing the stuff and we're not even going to talk about the master Emerald or what Knuckles' uh, purpose was like, and, and all of this is being told Knuckles isn't even involved in the telling of the story. It's the spirit of Pachacamac who was the one who said, Hey, we should like kill all the owls, right? Because we want that master <laughs> Emerald. Like it, 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 it get, when I, when I think about it too much, I'm like, I don't like what it's actually telling me as the story, because this isn't actually then what happened to Knuckles, because it's done through this very strange way of telling it. and also doesn't really connect to Knuckles' story. It's just meant to inspire Wade to somehow burst out of that little uh, circus jail he's in, <laughs> even though he shouldn't be able to do that. He is still a human being and also then be filled with the power to bowl, which I guess will teach him the echidna ways. <laughs> like it it does get to a point where it's just like, yeah, you are kind of going all over like, OK, this is just it's it's so ridiculous. It's fallen over the edge. Yeah. My initial thought was this is insane and I am disassociating. But I, I think that's that's the right interpretation, which is the entire thing is a lo- hallucination. If it presents a complication for the lore, who cares? Like, <laughs> well, that's why I said like in a bubble by itself. Let's, yeah. let's say Wade, Wade says to Knuckles, like, "Oh, do you remember when the owls killed your father?" He's like, "What are you talking about? That's not what happened." Mm. No, no, yeah, it was just the one owl, right? Because then we also. Like the owl thing does seem like here's this thread that's existed in the first two movies. And I don't know if we're really going to explore it in the third, but like even in episode three, when Knuckles is like, oh yeah, my tribe was killed by a bunch of owls. He, he is like that, that owl was Sonic's mom and she was (laughs) like the good guy. She's protecting Sonic (laughs) and Knuckles is like, yeah, you know, they're, they're bad. And it's like it's because it was it is a bit more complicated, like yeah. in terms of the dynamics and, the, and the, yeah, but like it is still. That's why that's why I said like in a bubble, <laughs> like oh sorry, in a bubble, <laughs> I'm so, in a bubble. It's it's a great it's great it's insane. Like I like it, but then <laughs> if I try to think about it too deeply in terms of like what is Knuckles' story as a whole. That's when I start going, I don't know how I feel about it. But it is, like you said, a hallucination done through the view of Wade. So if they ever do want to revisit it, they could reframe it in a different way and actually have Knuckles yeah. tackle it. I guess it's just a shame that the show about Knuckles the Echidna didn't get to actually explore those elements of Knuckles. Like that that does seem like a bit of a waste, but I think it's also because the budget wouldn't have actually afforded the opportunity to explore those moments as they as like they (laughs) spent it all on music they spent it all on music michael bolton is very expensive (laughs) (laughs) i imagine he did it for scale or maybe maybe yeah i'm I'm gonna say he he has a relationship it as a favor for yeah he has a relationship with loney island right like he did the the uh the tale of Mm -hmm. that was michael bolton right the kill of captain jack sparrow yeah so I think it was just a favor. I'm going to do something goofy. I think I think I like it just in the sense of giving Knuckles more lore, even though it doesn't really compute. I like that it's adjacent. Listen, it would be better if it were somehow related to Sonic and the main character and the main story in a more direct way and not feel more like they wanted to do Kingpin 2 <laughs> couldn't do it without getting the IP to a video game character and this is the episode where they throw us some bones but actually the bones are like misshapen AI bones because it's like actually this is not what are you talking about flames of disaster Eatless knuckles no this is not yeah those don't go together but in this case they do because I guess you know blaze will not have that as part of her story anymore or maybe she will because knuckles finds the power comes from within so does he absorb iblis's power or is he just finding the ability to do a flame punch which he sometimes is able to do in the games Mm -hmm. i i think that's sort of consistent with the other movie stuff which is 
Sonic learns that he has this special lightning power in this time of heightened emotion, and that was yeah came from within, and he didn't even know about it. Yeah, and then he really powers up. You know, it's because their dads gave him the chaos power. Yeah, when they were eggs, all of them. Archie lore. That's right. If they had access to the Archie lore, we could have seen a scene <laughs> where the chief Pachakamak puts Knuckles' egg into a microwave, and uh, <laughs> we could have gotten that. If you're able to follow this conversation and all of these references, congratulations to you. <laughs> what a what a special broken mind and world we live in. <laughs> what what the hell was that sentence? Don't worry about it. Uh, okay. Final thoughts, I guess, because we are way over time this is a long episode yes. thank you for listening but yeah final thoughts on the first four i guess anything that we haven't covered or i don't know first first four it's such a weird timeline that this happened this year and that it is like a giant success and or at least relative to paramount right giant success like that and that's all that matters is like if paramount considers it a success and here's my prediction is movie three is going to be huge i think you're right I, I think so, too. I think if the movie is good, and I think it will be, like if the movie is as good or better than movie two, and my prediction is that it will be because it's going to be adapting the strongest source material that the franchise has to offer. Aside from 06. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from 06. Right. Uh, I, so I think if the movie is good, it's going to just hit at the right time. I, I Yeah, I think just like there are so few kids movies that kids are into this they're hyped with the knuckles show like movie three is gonna be a smash yeah i i gotta i gotta agree i think it's yeah i think it's gonna make more money definitely than the first two and also because like the first one suffered from we don't know if this will be good oh i guess it's good uh covid happened and the second movie was still in that like okay we're we're finally going back to the theater you know for some people it was the first or second film that they saw again in theaters yep this one doesn't have all of those uh yeah those barriers it is like everyone loves shadow everyone who saw two and saw the post credit scene like they're all on board even kids who shouldn't know who shadow is know who shadow is like it it is at its strongest point i think it's gonna make it is gonna make a ton of money I don't know if it would, you know, become a billion dollar movie, but I think not not a billion, but two hundred million. No, it's not going to be a billion. To, yeah. All right. It's going to make three point four billion dollars. It's going to be the most successful <laughs> film of all time. I'm sorry, Titanic. I'm sorry, Avatar. I'm sorry, uh, uh, James Cameron. He's going to wish that he had secured he's the rights. He's going to join the franchise. He is James right. Cameron is going to pitch. He's <laughs> like he's going to write knuckles on a. He's going to write knuckle on a blackboard. And then put a uh, dollar <laughs> sign at the end. <laughs> That's right. Knuckles. Uh, there you go. And if you enjoy dollar signs, if you enjoy any sort of currency, if you enjoy life as a whole, then you can tell yourself, yeah, I'm also enjoying another episode of Sonic Weekly. <laughs> That's right. The podcast that you just listened to. Um, hey, if, if you enjoyed what you heard, if you made it all the way to the end of this super, this extra long, this giant, 80 page giant of an episode, you should subscribe with your podcatcher of choice, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Podcast Attic, the only open source podcatcher that we trust. Write a positive review of Podcast Attic or this show, either one. Either or. Right. Write a write a review. Say, hey, I enjoy it. You can write a review. You can do it maybe in whatever the app is. I think those forms exist. Do it. Say I like it. Tell people you know, hey, you know, Sonic's big again. You should listen to these guys just talk about Sonic. And and if you don't even want to deal with with pod podcatchers, you can subscribe on YouTube. That's at Sonic Dash Weekly. Don't forget the at and the dash. Uh, and you get to see some gameplay footage by the friend of the show, Jack of Old Games. Oh, uh, yeah. You can comment on those as well. We'll read the comments. It's a little long, so I won't look right now to see what's there, but we'll revisit it. Hey, yeah. And if you want to get in contact with the show, you can email us, sonicweeklypodcast at gmail.com. 
That's also how you get a link to our Discord server. You just ask for the link. We'll let you in there. You can talk to some like-minded Sonic the Hedgehog fans. You have a good time. Uh, we got to thank, of course, our guest who didn't join us for this Knuckles discussion, Ryan Langley, also known as Arlan. You know, check out where he is at in the description below. You know, you got the links there. Also got to thank Smoothies for editing this extra this super sized there's so many adjectives you know this long one we did a long one uh thank you smoothies for editing that and of course thank you grant and Bo, for each having one fist on fire and together you combine to become the flames of disaster but you're not a disaster so you're more like the opposite you're the flames of paradise thank you david thanks david (laughs) 